discipline racing. Before he commenced his three-year-old year, an offer of $1 million was made by American interests. Owners Wally, Fred and George Johnson refused the offer. Good boy. He commenced his three-year-old year winning the Wait for Age Freeway Stakes by five lengths under a tight hold. In the Ascot Vale, he won in similar fashion. Yes, I got suspended on him. That's probably one of the uh, most unforgivable things that uh, any jockey sh should uh, to say they were suspended riding vain because uh, he had so much speed on the others. But I think it was just uh, probably overconfidence that uh, caused that. And uh, it was a pretty good field, the Ascot Vale. Uh, Darrell's Joy and Woodcourt in. They, you know, in... Uh, after that, they proved that they were pretty good horses. Highland was replaced by Roy Higgins and watched the Mooney Valley Stakes from the grandstand. Racing inside the three furlongs in the 69 Mooney Valley Stakes and the glamour colt Vane travelling well. A couple of lengths to in second placing as Darrell's Joy Hardridden to improve, followed then by Woodcourt in. They've streeted the others, headed by Cobber Mine, all Myth and Nables as they come into the home corner. Higgins has Vane still travelling well, a length and a half in front. Darrell's Joy trying to come out after it, and they're well clear of Woodcourt in as they straighten up. Where the leader still is Vane. A length and a half to Darrell's Joy trying to get on terms clear of Woodcourt in. Vane in front. Now Darrell's Joy is coming out after it. It's Vane stopping. Darrell's Joy finishing slightly the better, and here's a boil over. Darrell's Joy gets up to win from the odds on Pop Vane, and five lengths to Woodcourt in, and a long gap to Ormith, followed by Cobber Mine and Naples. For the only the second time in his career, Vane is beaten. The victor, Darrell's Joy, ridden by Jay Sellers for trainer Sid Brown. Vane second at nine to four on, with Woodcourt in in third at ten to one. Takes from the grandstand. I suppose if he was ever going to be beaten again, that was the, the race because it was his first attempt at a mile. And a mile at Mooney Valley was probably the hardest mile of, uh, of all. Um, and he went into it with a strange jockey. Not that uh, that throws any light on Roy, but, um, you know, the, I knew the horse back. The 69 Caulfield Guineas as they pass the three and Vane leads out from Darrell's Joy. Woodcourt in three or four lengths away third, followed by Arturo and then Yuri. Lone Wolf is sweeping out wide with Summer Chap and Dimian is next. And Aggravator is last of all, passing the two nearing the home turn. And Vane in front, Darrell's Joy's putting some pressure to it. They're three or four lengths in front now from Woodcourt in and Dimian in the straight. And they've still got to catch Vane. Highland took a peep over his shoulder. Darrell's Joy trying hard to catch Vane. But the young superstar's far too good. They won't catch him over the mile. And Vane goes on to win the guineas by three lengths from Darrell's Joy. About six lengths further back to Woodcourt in from Endymion. Then Aggravator Summer Chad Archiro Yuri. And Lone Wolf is last of all. A magnificent win to the 10 to 9 on favourite Vane, trained by Jim Maloney. And little wonder Pat Highland was all smiles as he brought the champion back to scale. Vane gained revenge over Darrell's joy in the Caulfield Guineas, beating him easily by three lengths. And they're off now with Sherengro down near the inside first to bounce out from future. Tobamori began well with Napper. Black Onyx going fast on the outside and they were being followed then going fast on the outside was Crewman and Broker Stippers going up looking for the lead and Golvin taking a handy position followed by Wings of the Morning going fast. Rory double steal and then follows Black Onyx with Gallicus in behind him and Lockport was still last. On the railway side, there's three and a half furlongs left to go, and Ham Muir has taken the lead. Ham Muir shows the way there. Fuller ranging up on the outside. He's got within a half length of him. Crewman going up on the outside. Cast iron has met with a check there and dropped right back along the inside rail as Nasori pulled to the outside, ranged up into third place. On the turn into the straight now with two furlongs left to go and Ham Muir the leader challenged by Fuller on the outside. Crewman is there too and Tobamori coming into the picture on the outside. Into the straight as they settle for the run home. Nasori has dashed up on the outside to take the lead from Fuller. Ham Muir on the inside and Tobamori the danger coming down the outside. At the furlong post it's Nasori in front. He's gone away to lead about a length over Big Falou. Tobamori and Ham Muir followed by Fuller and double steel. Nasori in front with 30 or 40 yards to go. Big Falou can't make it and Nasori has won the day. Nasori by an X from Big Falou. Tobamori elect the way third, followed by Double Steel, and then came Lockcourt, followed by Fuller, Gallicus on the outside, Ham Muir, Future, Sherengo, Pad the way, and then came Brokers, Tip Terminal, in behind them, Napper, followed by Vita Sane and Crewman, Golvin, and the second last home was Cast Iron, and the last to pull up was Black Onyx. Nasori and his jockey Des Lake's moment of glory, however, was short-lived. Big Falou's rider Roy Higgins fired in a protest. 
And after a very lengthy delay, as the crowd waited eagerly, the controversial news came through that Big Falou was awarded the race on protest. They're away in the WS Cox Plate. Daryl's Joy for number two alley first out. Ben Lamond out in the centre and Divide and Rule began smartly. So did Golden Sound coming across and getting up on the fence is Fuller, followed by Carter, Prince and Tails. Then came out getting a rails run next is Nasori, followed by Future, who's back near the tail with Crin's side. Passing the half mile now. And here come the runs. It's Daryl's Joy in front, but in the black colours out deep, Divide and Ruled in a lightning burst has gone up to join those. In the centre is Golden Sound, and between runners next is Ben Lamond as they come down past the three. In behind those next of all came Fuller, and the gap in the field to Nasori getting a rails run from Tails. Carter Prince dropping out from Future and Crewman, but down the side towards the home corner, passing the two, and Daryl's Joy got away. Divide and Rule raising enough of their effort out deep on the track, and then came Ben Lamond getting between runners, Golden Sound dropping out. Fuller getting up on the inside track through then by Nasori and pulled out deep as tails, but they still haven't caught Daryl's Joy. In fact, it booted away, and Daryl's Joy looks set for victory. Lang working overtime on Ben Lamont, clear of Fuller, but it's all Daryl's Joy. Daryl's Joy wins the Cox Plate, second Ben Lamont, Fuller third, ahead of the fast finishing Nasori, and further back to Crewman and Divide and Rule. A brilliant win to Daryl's Joy, ridden by Bill Skelton for Sid Brown. Darrell's Joy led at the seven, three parts to Golden Sound, a length swift and sure, a length and a half, Hodman Dodd. One to Gallagher, and now Divide and Rules almost got in two off the fence. Uh, but keeping him out in the centre's Lone Wolf, one to top, flat and index. Near the three in the derby, the favourite Darrell's Joy in front. Half a length to Golden Sound, a length and a half, swift and sure. Then Hodman Dodd, Divide and Rules been three wide all the way, further back, top, flat. But Darrell's Joy cornered to about a length clear now of Golden Sound and swift and sure. Followed further back by Hodman Dodd, top flat. Oh, Billy Skelton goes for home. And Daryl Joy shot away three in front of the two. And second place, top flat now running on from Gallicus. And further back is Paradine, but a furlong and a quarter out. And Daryl Joy four lengths in front. Skelton risks a peep over the shoulder. He's holding the second one, top flat at bay. And Billy Skelton going to land the derby. A brilliant win on Daryl Joy. He's a mile too good and wins by three lengths to top flat, a great second. Four links to Gallagher's third, three links to Paradigm fourth, 12 links away, Hodman Dodd, Swift and Shore in Dimmy and Lone Wolf, four links to Wall Miss, three to Golden Sound, eight links to Divide and Rule, then Summer Chat and Index last home. Yes, the putters cheer as the five to four favourite Daryl's Joy returns to scale and completes the Cox Plate Victoria Derby double. Second placing top flat, Roy Higgins, and third Gallicus ridden by Hilton Cope. And it's an elated jockey, Bill Skelton. The Craven A Stakes and leading the way in the Fashion Stakes, Identity, Lillian Frank. As they move out, Des Lake on, move out, Des Lake on Foresight, followed by Magic Ruler, Roy Higgins. And the 4-1 to one on favourite, Vane, number 5, Pat Highland. They're off and out in Barrier 6, Vane flies out of the machine and crosses over to the fence and is in front in the twinkling of an eye from Steel Helmet who's going forward with our faith. Top weight foresight up on the speed with Dollars Double, then Raja well back with Storm Ruler. Magic Ruler back on the inside, starting a run from Regal Rhythm, blasting out the middle of the track. But the flying vein is nicely clear as they come onto the course proper. And now as they race down with about two furlongs left to go, and Highland releases the brakes on this brilliant colt, and away he goes. He's seven or eight lengths in front. From Dollars Double now getting to second, our faith over on the fence and Regal Rhythm running on, but it's all Vane, and Vane races away to win the Craven A stakes by 12 lengths from Dollars Double, with our faith hanging on for third just ahead of Regal Rhythm. But it was during the 1969 Melbourne Cup Carnival that Vane sealed his greatness. In the space of just seven days, he won three feature events, the first of which was the Craven A stakes. Eight lengths in front of Dollars Double and our faith, and how about this for a machine? And he's got 20,000 for that. Vane went on to win by 10 lengths. Vane's winning margin of 12 lengths is the biggest ever recorded in a major handicap. They're on the home turn in the LKS McKinnon and straightening up. Lake had wings of the morning in front, but not for long. Lang is urging Ben Lamont forward on the outside, issuing a challenge over on the fence in the white colours as Rain Lover can't get out. 
Joining in now is Big Flu and Moore is winding up Roman Consul on the outside as they race to the furlong. Ben Lamond had swept to the lead in turn tackle by Big Flu. Further out is Roman Consul joining in. Rain Lover can't get to them. It's Ben Lamond, Big Flu and Roman Consul. Roman Consul the outside doing slightly the better and Roman Consul gets up to win by a head to Big Flu. Third Ben Lamond followed by Rain Lover and Wings of the Morning last. Melbourne Cup Day 1969 and the Runners Parade. Equal top weight general command with Chris William aboard. Followed along by last year's winner, Rain Lover, ridden by Jimmy Johnson. Number three, Ben Lamond, R. Lang aboard, will start from Barrier 21. Four, Fleur, ridden by John Stocker for trainer Colin Hayes. And the heavily backed Pat Murray trained Tails, ridden by Mick Mallion. Here's Bert Bryant. And they're off and running in the Melbourne Cup and a great even start too. Saw down near the inside, Old Sop the first to move out from Fleur. Rain Lover got away with a great burst of speed and so too did Sir Kinsman who's showing an electrifying burst of speed in the first 70 or 80 yards to go to the front and further out on the track moving up quickly into a more prominent position is Ben Lohman from New Zealand as they start to link up with a course proper down past the two and a half furlongs pole. Sir Kinsman on the inside here moving up as Devil Boy in the centre going fast as a sharper four out from the fence is Ben Lomond over on the inside is Rain Lover trying to get up on the inside there of Fleur. The packing field in the cup and the leader Sir Kinsman about three parts of a length in front of Rain Lover and Fleur. They've both grabbed this leader three across the track two lengths to Wizcan moving up. General command on the fence right around and going very wide as Serrano tails and right off the track right around the outside of them came Old Stop followed by Terminal Serrano. Ben Lomond locked court. Rain Lover in front. Olsop is moving up on the outside to challenge and they're followed closely then by Swift General Fleur. In behind them, Tails now pulled out and he's coming home reasonably well only at the furlong and a quarter now. Olsop moved up on the outside to tackle Rain Lover. They're clear of Tails who can't win, he can't stay. A half furlong left to go. Olsop and Rain Lover. Rain Lover and Olsop. They're going head and head. Rain Lover on the inside. Rain Lover's got his neck in front and won by a neck. Second Olsop, third Ben Lohman, fourth Lock Court. Yes, the five-year-old Rain Lover, ridden by Jimmy Johnson and trained by Mick Rovens, becomes the first horse this century to win back-to-back -back Melbourne Cups. Second, the lightweight Allsop, ridden by Ray Setches, and Ben Lamont, third, ridden by Arlene. Rain Lover's victory, however, was overshadowed by the sensational late scratching of the hot favourite Big Flu 40 minutes prior to the race, amid claims of being nobbled. On the day, they were denied by connections and officialdom, but a subsequent inquest found Big Flu had been administered a massive dose of a laxative drug. A strapper was found to be the culprit, leaving Big Flu's trainer, Bart Cummings, to lament a lost opportunity. Quite a rarity in, uh, in the racing, and I think it's pleased very well by the uh, stewards to keep those type of people out of racing. Uh, but the first thing is to detect them, and uh, it's often too late. And so ended one of Australia's greatest racing scandals. On Oaks Day, Vane smashed the course record for seven furlongs at Flemington in winning the Wait for Age Linlithgow Stakes, beating the class racehorse Black Onyx by six lengths. Vane completed his Cup Carnival assault in the George Adams handicap over a mile, carrying ten pounds more than Wait for Age. Unfortunately, it was to be Vane's last race. As he suffered a leg injury, while preparing for a return to racing the following autumn. I'd never seen a horse win with the ease that he used to win with. You know, and he's only got beaten the twice out of 14 starts, so I think that I don't like comparing him with other fellas' horses because you, you don't want to make enemies over things like that, but uh, oh, he was a pretty special horse, very special. Vane was such a great horse and, and probably uh, he came at a time when uh, both Jim and I, we needed that type of horse and uh, it was a, well it was like a gift from heaven. Vane was retired to wooden stud in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales where he went on to prove that he was the complete horse, a champion on the racetrack and at the stud. New Zealand are